Hello, everyone. It's uh, Wednesday, September the 23rd. I know we're late getting here and, and, and getting going today. We've had, uh, we've had some technical difficulties in getting going in the last little bit. And, and prior to that, we, we've had a lot of meetings. You'll see that uh, you know, Dr. Marsh and our, our, <coughs> our secretary, Bill Crouch, is with us today. And, uh, and, but we've had a lot of meetings, you know, and just trying to uh, go over and more better perfect, you know, uh, methodologies and, and ways, and I'll get into them in just a few minutes. But uh, before I go any further, we have had seven additional deaths since Monday in West Virginia. You know, I'm, I, I always want us to take the time to read these people and, uh, at least try in some way to pay our respect to the families and to these great West Virginians. But our 313th death was an 89-year-old male from Harrison County. Our 314th death, a 50-year-old female from Fayette County. Our 315th death, a 66-year-old male from Mercer County. Our 316th death, an 82-year-old female from Kanawha County. In fact, all the rest of them are from Kanawha County. Our 317th death, a 72-year-old male from Kanawha County. Our 318th death, a 91-year-old female from Kanawha County. And our 319th death, an 80-year-old male from Kanawha County. You know, it's... Uh, you can't imagine how... how difficult it is for me to read these names. But I know that's just a fraction of the difficulty and the pain that these families are going through. Uh, please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. You know, it's just, uh, it's just not good, not good. But uh, please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, in West Virginia, in the last 24 hours, we had 120 new positive cases. Our daily positivity rate was 3.35. Uh, our cumulative rate is now at, at 2.76. Uh, the number of recovered cases is approaching 11,000, 10,721. Our active cases are around 3,500. 3,464 is the right number. Our uh, our RT number is getting better. You know, uh, we're now at 1.11, I'm sorry, 1.03. You know, naturally, if we drop below one, that's really, really, really good. Uh, we're down from 1.11 on Monday. Our highest, I think, was at 1.46, at, at what time we were the worst in the country. Today, we're the 22nd worst in the country, so we're getting a whole lot better there. Today, you'll see from our new map that just came up, and that's what we've been spending a lot of time working on this morning and everything. We do not have any counties in the red. That's really good. We have counties in the orange, or Mongahelia County, uh, Putnam, Kanawha, Fayette, Boone, Logan, Mingo, and Wayne counties. And, uh, and I can tell you more about them as I go f further here in the briefing. You know, uh, I talk a whole lot about testing, and I really, really urge you in every way to go out, take advantage of the free testing, and get tested. For crying out loud, we need more and more and more testing, and what that's going to give us is it's going to identify just a very, very few that could really get sick, but more so than anything, they are walking around and don't know they have this disease and they're infecting others and then they infect others and lo and behold, absolutely, we have people die because we don't know. We just don't know. So how do we, how do we achieve knowing? The only way we can achieve knowing is to be able to test more. The only way we can achieve knowing is just what I just said, to test more. Now, you may think we're doing that. In Kanawha County, in the last seven days, we have tested an average of 400 people a day. 
in a county with well over 150,000 people, we've tested 400 people a day. Something's really, really wrong with this equation. Not only will it help in every way to identify first and foremost people that are sick and don't know they're sick, but it will help us dramatically and help you in Kanawha County, as in all the other counties, to be able to get yourself out of the red, out of the orange, into the gold, into the yellow, and possibly even into the green. Now, the only way that that can happen is we have got to be able to test lots and lots and lots of people. Now, with that, what would be tremendously beneficial to us is to be able to test children as well as the adults, as well as somebody that has a real concern, as well as somebody that's not feeling well, but it is absolutely imperative that we're able to test everyone, to test all the different demographic and everything, and we'll never be able to test everybody in the county, but from the standpoint of coming out and taking advantage of the free testing, we got to do that. So, one of the things that we just have been working on just in the last little bit that caused us to be late is just this. We don't have enough testing going on either. And so we're going to even change that and amp that up significantly, and we're already in motion in doing that. We've got to be able to help, help the health departments in our counties. We've got to make life for them easier rather than more difficult. We have our guard and we've got to put more resources, meaning dollars, into being able to push, to push more and more guardsmen and ladies out into the field to be able to do this work. Now, I have authorized every amount of that to happen and just got through doing so. So, with that being said, I want to tell our local county health departments just this. You're doing fabulous work. We appreciate you beyond belief. And without any question, we totally understand that you are tired and you have worked so diligently and so well that all of us appreciate that. But some way, somehow, we've got to do more. And so what we're trying to do, what we're trying to say to you and to everyone is we're going to run through DHHR, through our National Guard, through whatever it may be, we're going to run to your rescue run to your fire, and we're going to help you to make life somewhat easier for you, but give us the ability to be able to process and test lots, lots more than we're doing at this current time. And we're gonna do that with resources we have and with the deployment of the National Guard and a lot of extra help from DHHR. So, you know, now, going back to Kanawha County, I would say, just as point blank as I can possibly say to Kanawha County, you have got to go get tested more than you are being tested right now. Let me tell you one other number. Do you realize that in the last seven days, on the drive-through testing that has been done, not the testing that's been done at CMAC, because that impacts you as well, and not the testing at Med, Med Express, and not the testing at Thomas, not that testing, but just at the drive-through testing that you've done, your positivity number for the last seven days is reported directly to me from, you know, Dr. Sherry Young, who's doing a fabulous job. I mean, there's nobody in the state that's doing any better than Sherry, and she does a great, great job. You know, now there's lots of people that may, do, may, may be doing as good, but there's nobody that's doing anything better. Now, with that being said, she's telling me that through the last seven days on the drive-through testing that we've done, your positivity rate in Kanawha County is running at like 5.6%. Now, if we could get you down to a below 5%, you see how close you are to being in the goal? You're so close, it's unbelievable, to getting yourself there. Now, we've got to take into consideration CMAC and Thomas and MedExpress, 
And that's going to make your numbers go higher than the 5.6%. But if we get more and more and more testing, you're going to find yourself in Kanawha County moving in a trend in a way that is absolutely giving us hope, hope throughout all of our county to be able to go to school, to be able to play sports, to be able to do more things, but the biggest driver that it will give us more than anything, and forgive me for being so passionate about this, but the biggest driver that it will give us, it will identify people that are spreading this thing right here in Kanawha County, and we can stop it. We can stop it if we just knew who they were. So the only way we're going to figure that out is just like I said, the only way in the world we can possibly figure that out is by testing more and more and more. So we're going to do that in all the red and all the orange counties, and hopefully we'll be able to do that as well in, in, the, in, in the gold or the yellow county some also and everything. And, and, uh, and there's no point in me going through where we're going to be today and where the testing is going to be. The testing is going to be in the, in, in, in the red and the orange counties, and we're going to cover it up and just keep testing and keep testing and keep testing, and uh, hopefully we're going to end up with some really good, good results that are going to be able to, you know, send us on our way as being able to do things, you know, like go back to school and everything. But we don't want to just go back to school, you know. We don't want to just play sports. We want to go back to school and play sports and do all the things within our county safely, safely from the standpoint of our teachers, from the standpoint of, you know, all those that are working, all the service people that are working, from the standpoint of all of us throughout the county. I mean, it is simple as simple can be. We have got to test to stop this dreaded disease. Now, you got to go get tested. You know, later today, they're going to test me, and, and you, everyone can watch me getting tested. Maybe you can laugh and enjoy that a little bit and everything, but I'll get tested right here in front of me and show you that it is absolutely painless. It takes five seconds, you know, and, and absolutely it's the easiest thing in the world to do. There's nothing to it. Go get tested. And I even think, you know, from the standpoint of our children, they do it a little bit differently and it's even easier. So, so, uh, so with that being said, uh, let me jump and just remind everybody, you know, to, you know, that it's the flu season coming up and uh, to go and get your flu shots. And I think, you know, in Kanawha County, we're, we're offering that and uh, offering that, you know, uh, along with maybe some of our testing and just take advantage of all that if you can. Uh, you know, from the standpoint, and I want to, I'll talk about that in just one second, another thing. But we've got 41 outbreaks in our long-term care facilities. We have only four outbreaks in our churches now. We have, we have outbreaks that, uh, you know, and, and so that number has dropped, and we're, good, we're glad about that. We only have seven active cases at Mount Olive. We have 11 staff cases there and, uh, and, and 11 staff cases across the state in our corrections. Nine of those are at Mount Olive, and we continue to do testing and sanitization there, and all that's, all that's much, much, much better. From our small business applications, we're up to 7,000, which is good. We've, we've now got 20 million in the pipeline that's going out to our small businesses. That's great stuff. We've got 116,575,000 and change that have gone out to 191 cities and counties. We continue, that number continues to move up. We continue to ask more and more people to apply. We're now in a dead heat, tied for first in our census with Idaho at 99.8% of our residents so far counted. <laughs> you have eight days left. Unbelievable. Way to go, everybody. That's really good. Really, really good. We've reached an agreement with our private schools, and I'm going to explain to you what that is. Basically, we are going to allow our pri private schools because they have agreed to test everyone in those schools. We're going to allow our private schools to go to school on, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the orange as, and, and not in the red. If we go red, the private schools are not going to school. You know, we, we really, as a government, as a state government, have no control really over these schools. You know, they do not take funding whatsoever from us and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, 
but they have agreed to do something that I think is novel and I think is worthy, and, and, and they are very different in that they don't have, you know, they, they, some don't have sports, they don't have busing in a lot of situations and all that. There are so many factors that they have that's really different than our public school system. And from the standpoint of exposure, they have a, a, a minimized exposure, and we all recognize that. In this situation, it is really, really difficult to say one size fits all. And in this situation, you know, a lot of times what ha happens is you get people that are, that are trending one way and everybody's stuck in the mud and nobody will listen and compromise and work together and everything. You end up in lawsuits and everything else under the sun. We don't need that in West Virginia if we can, if we can prevent it. That's the great part about, you know, all of our demonstrations and all the different things that we had, you know, from the standpoint of showing and expressing our freedom of speech and everything. We did that in a, in a, in a kind way. We did that in a constructive way and everything. But that's the way we do stuff here in West Virginia. And so, so with all that, you know, what they're going to do is they have agreed to test every single child and every staff member at that school. Every single child and every staff member at that school. Only children can come to in-class school if they have been tested and they have a negative test. And, and surely the same with the staff. So with all that being said, you know, what we've got is we've got an agreement that's going to allow them to go in the orange and everything, provided across the board they have that testing. And in addition to that, we have to all understand that uh, now what we hope is in lots and lots of ways they can be an example for the other Christian and private schools throughout the state. And, uh, and, and you know, I just think that not only that, they will significantly help all the public schools from the standpoint that they are 100% being tested and their numbers will reflect well to our public schools and really be able to, to help our public schools and, and help them get started back and, and uh, all that's really good. So, so uh, you know, you know the, I, th I think really that's all I have. I can't really, I can't see any, any of the other comments, but, but I think that's all I've got in regard to the public schools or the private schools. Now I want to talk just real quickly about, the, about Mon County Mon County's been red, 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 and, and really and truly, uh, it looked like, well, you know, what are we going to do there? I mean, really, you know, how are we going to get our kids back in school? How are we going to safely do that without compounding this situation? How in the world are we going to be able to resume some level of normalcy in, in that county? Because we had all kinds of problems there, did we not? We've closed the bars there. You know, if I could just touch on that just real briefly. You know, now we have been sued by the bar owners, and they have every right to do so. But I want everyone to understand just exactly this. You know, right off the get-go, I proposed a plan that involves strict safety measures, you know, for those bars to be able to expand the space and to operate and, and from the standpoint of the distancing and everything else, and they rejected that. And then we allowed them after that because we set a date, and I can't recall exactly the date, but it, you know, it was, it was several days, ten days out, you know, or something like that. We extended the closure, extended it, extended it, and then finally we reopened because I am an absolute believer that. As these businesses are closed, things, things, you know, not only do, do they hurt employees, employees have to have jobs and the economics of it and everything. I get it. I get every bit of that. But as soon as we opened up, as soon as we opened up, we get all kinds of pictures and everything else where there's people piled on, up on top of one another. There's no masks. There's no social distancing. And in a county that we were already struggling with. So I said, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. And so at the end of the day, I made the decision to shut back down. And I'm proud of that decision. 
and I'm not backing up on that decision in any way. Now, I'm really, really happy to say that from the city standpoint and the county, we've worked really, really hard together, and I think we're still continuing to work together, and I know WVU's done incredible work with Arnold and, and, you know, and, and what they're doing there, and I know that WVU, because they're watching what the, the word that I'm getting ready to report to you, that WVU is closely monitoring how the colors are working in Mon County. And so WVU, I think, is on the brink of maybe making a decision to come back to school, of which, you know, if they do that, we will be totally supportive because they're watching where I'm getting ready to report. We feel like that Mon County is really trending and trending well. And today they're in the orange. But it surely looks to us like if they continue to test, they are very, very, very soon going to be in the gold or the yellow. And from that standpoint, we were really, really happy about, you know, the progress that we've made in Mon County. And so from the standpoint of closing the bars and absolutely protecting the people, protecting our kids, giving us the right to maybe be able to go back to school. And I say maybe because I don't know that the colors, you know, are going to fall into the orange, I mean, into the gold right yet. But I think they're going to, I think that they're really close and I think we're going to get there, you know, to be able to go back to playing sports, to be able to have, you know, so many things happening in Mon County in a positive way for us and everything. That's good stuff. And so as far as the bars, if they sue, they have every right, every constitutional right to do just that. I say pour it on, you know, and, uh, but I'm going to continue to make tough decisions and I'm going to continue to do the right thing to try to protect our kids, to try to try to get us back to school, to try to protect the elderly, to try to protect all those in every way I possibly can. I tried to do the right thing there from a standpoint of opening, but we just seem, seem like we can't handle it in a safe manner and everything and so I've made the right decision on that and that's where I'm going to stand uh, now I think I think you know and, I, and again I, I apologize for my enthusiasm and passion I think I think our counties a bunch of our counties that are have been in the red and people that are sitting home without hope and wondering what in the world's going on. We want to first and foremost be ultra, ultra safe, but absolutely the, the, the key, you know, I told Dr. Marsh this last night. I said, you know, Dr. Marsh, we, we've probably been teased and or, and or criticized, you know, with, with our color code system and how we've uh, adapted that and everything and how we've gone for, for, forward with that. And, and I'm really proud of the way that we've done it because we've had to tweak and, 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 and change things that we go, and there's a lot of people that have had some fun on social media with that. But now just think about this. You know, how long has the color code system been in effect? And it's been in effect, I don't know, three or four weeks. And we've been tweaking it and trying to perfect it and make it more right and more right. And we feel daggum good that we're really, really, really close to having it now. How many people would think that in, in a situation that no one has ever seen before, that a bunch of people could take and invent something and then tweak it for three or four weeks and have it right? So I'm really proud of the work that the people have done and and with all, all that, I told Dr. Marsh just this. I said, you know, when we made the decision and we came up with the idea of looking at this as infection and positivity and giving the people the best of the two, looking at it that way and not just looking at it as infection where people were really hesitant to test because the more they tested, the worse it got, you know. And, and, and then coming up with the positivity arm and saying, wait a minute here, you know, we need the test. 
because the more we test, the more we know. And we need to get the test. And so we came up with a way that you could have either or, whichever's lower, whichever's better for your county. And so in that, now we've got a movement on to where people, we're trying, we're trying everything that we can try, but we have to have the cooperation of the coaches and the, the parents and the teachers and anybody that's out there that could encourage people to come and get tested. So now we've got a real movement going on, do we not, on people coming and becoming tested. So therefore we learn stuff. And then therefore we make real, real adjustments that can really truly save lives. And my words to Dr. Marsh last night is, you know, Clay, we've done a lot of good work. And we made a lot of tough decisions. And we had to make a lot of adjustments along the way. But maybe the very best work that we've done, period, is coming up with the idea of going infection and positivity and giving us the, the choice of the two that encourages us to test. Because the more that we test, we're going to find out stuff to stop this thing. That's the, I mean, this may be our greatest moment. This may West Virginia be your best, best moment because if you do test more, we'll be able to pinpoint, surgically attack this disease and stop it. So I told him last night, I said, you know, Clay, this may be our best moment right now. This moment on being able to just test more. It seems so simple, but always, always, the best ideas are the simplest. They're the most difficult to find. So I congratulate everybody that's had the input to go into making all this a reality. So uh, that's all I got. Just keep it up, West Virginia. We're going to get there. All right, thank you, Governor. Let's first today go to Dr. Clay Marsh, our coronavirus czar. Well, thank you and good afternoon. And I, I really am without much to say, which is not common, um, other than to say that the governor has really um, very clearly stated the fact that we now have two ways for each citizen to run to the fire, to support each other, to make West Virginia a much safer place, to save lives, to open up our state for education for our children and for our teachers and our staff. And that is number one, go get tested. Don't be afraid of it, go get tested. The more people that get tested, the more we will know of who might be walking around who is not uh, aware that they are infected with COVID-19. And to that end, a recent article came out in a very high level medical journal that basically reinforced the idea that about 8.9% of people infected with COVID-19 are who we call super spreaders and tend to infect many, many other people. And according to this article, 8.9% of people infected infect 80% of others. Think about that. Less than 10% of people infected can infect almost everybody else. And the time that they're the most infectious is in the two-day window before they have symptoms and on the day of symptoms, in that pre-symptomatic phase. So as the governor said, one of the ways that each citizen can run to the fire is get tested. Help make sure that we identify these folks so that we can help them if they need help, but importantly, so that we can protect other people from becoming infected who might contact them in that period. The other way that people can run to the fire is Wear your mask and physically distance. This article also really brought home this idea that COVID-19 is spread by aerosols and by droplets that people produce when they talk, when they yell, when they sing, when they, um, when they even breathe. 
And so physical distancing away from each other reduces the amount of virus that you're exposed to if you're around somebody who has created those droplets or aerosols. And by wearing a mask, we know that we reduce the production of those droplets or aerosols. So West Virginia, show up and get tested at the places that we will have available for you free. So important, so important for the counties to reach the gold color, the green and the yellow, but more importantly, so important for us to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in our state, save lives, do that, and also pay attention to not overcrowding, avoiding the three C's. Keep your physical distance, six feet or more, wear your mask, wear your mask, help each other, love each other, help West Virginia be the place that everybody wants to come to because of the amazing community that we see acting together to protect each other and help West Virginia shine very brightly. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Marsh. Secretary Bill Crouch from the West Virginia DHHR and Dr. Ayn Amjad, our state health officer, are also joining us today and are available for questions. Major General Hoyer with the West Virginia National Guard had a previously scheduled engagement today, but he will join us again on Friday. We'll now go to questions from members of the media. The first today from Kenny Bass with WCHS and Fox 11. Hi, this is Kenny Bass with Channel 8 and Fox 11. I know Superintendent Birch is not here, Governor, but perhaps uh, Secretary Crouch or Dr. Amjad can handle this one. What is the holdup? What is the barrier? What is the noise that's getting in the way of clearly delineating where outbreaks and instances of COVID-19 and coronavirus infections are occurring in the state's public schools? We're doing that for nursing homes already, where it's clearly broken out on the dashboard. And I'm commending the DHHR for doing that. That's been critically important information when we get outbreaks that families have needed. What is the thinking that families don't need that exact same information where schools are concerned? The Department of Education has sloughed it off to DHHR and says, you're going to have to get those numbers from those guys. Well, Secretary Crouch, is that something that you guys are interested in doing? Do you think it's important that those numbers get out? And what's in the way of making that happen? Thank you. Governor? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Kenny. Uh, good question. We've had that uh, question a couple of times in the last couple of days. And we've learned that local health uh, uh, departments, we've learned that uh, boards of education are providing that information to the community. Let me talk a little bit about data here. I, I, we get the question constantly in terms of why our data doesn't match local data. We have over 3,400 active cases in the state. We have about 91 outbreaks right now. Uh, it is appropriate for those local boards of health and those local school boards to announce, those, uh, announce that information. When we get those positive cases, we don't know that it's a teacher. We don't know that, that there's an outbreak unless it's two or more teachers who are connected um, epidemiologically, so that whether that's in a meeting or on a bu school bus for children, wherever that might be. So we have outbreak information uh, for schools, but we don't have those individual cases that a lot of counties are reporting. So we wait until that information comes through an investigation of the local health department and gives us the additional information to know that we have an outbreak. If it's only one individual, we don't know that that's a teacher. So those are local issues. I certainly think it's, uh, it's important for folks to know. We would encourage that. Uh, but that is really a local issue from the standpoint of, of the school boards and uh, local health departments uh, uh, making those announcements. All right, thank you, Kenny. Next to Matthew. Come back to me just one second. You know, Kenny, I, I, I really appreciate your question. I understand it. And, uh, and, and from my standpoint, I, I'll push to, uh, to be able to get that information out and, and out in a way that, uh, that, that that comes out to everyone. I, I, I really do believe that, that some of the hang up is just this, is, is us being able to get that information from the local, you know, the local school boards or whomever it may be. But, uh, but I, I, I'll, I'll really, I'll, I'll make an extra push on that because I understand the importance and, and surely the importance from the standpoint of, of parents wanting to know, you know, what's going on at all the schools. So I'm, I'll, I'll work on that really hard here later on today. All right, thank you, Kenny. Next to Matthew Young with the West Virginia Daily News. Uh, good afternoon, Matthew Young with the West Virginia Daily News. I, I wanted to ask you about uh, about school nurses. Uh, in several counties, we have, have schools sharing nurses between three 
four, sometimes even even five locations. Obviously, this this creates a situation where we we don't have a nurse in the building every day that that students are are there. I would assume that the nurses, uh, you know, under the best of circumstances, would be running themselves fairly ragged. I wouldn't even want to imagine what their days could look like in the current climate. Uh, unfortunately, what it what it seems like is it, it comes down to comes down to money. Uh, counties just don't seem to have the resources or or the funding that they they need to hire more, you know, hire more nurses. Uh, Governor, I know you had spoken previously about reserving some funds uh, in a in a basket, as you put it. I believe the the number was 50 million, uh, you know, for some additional PPE and, and other things of that nature. Uh, I'm wondering, has there been any discussion at all about about what could be done uh, to to support the nurses and, and possibly help mitigate the workload? Uh, yeah, I would think at least as much as as the teachers right now, they're pretty much the first line of defense for for students at the schools. So, uh, what what could be doing, or maybe even what are we doing to to try to help them out? Thank you. Uh, if I could make a stab at it in the beginning, maybe, maybe Bill, you want to start? You, you want to start and then let me follow up. That's really a Clayton Birch, Birch question. We coordinate with nurses where we can with our local health departments and have a lot of, uh, a lot of communication with them. Uh, but I, the, the numbers in terms of the budget, I think there was some, some information, uh, budget uh, increase last year. The governor may know more about that. I really don't. Come back to me. Yeah. Come back to me. You know, from the standpoint last year in the budget, we put more dollars in the budget to be able to have more nurses in the schools. But, but, but I, I love the question because just this, I hate that Clayton Birch isn't here because you know, he could follow up on this and everything, but, but you make a really terrific point in this, from the standpoint of talking about our teachers as first line defense and our nurses surely to goodness are really first line defense. And so with all that being said, what we need to do is, you know, we'll go back and revisit with Clayton. You know, it's not been an issue that's been brought to me yet, but I'll assure you I'll go back and revisit with Clayton today because we do have the dollars available that we could absolutely do some, some uh, additional increases as far as being able to help, you know, with the, the ability to be able to, to have nurses not running all over Kingdom Come and, uh, and making it even more difficult on a life that they have that... Uh, is so courageous it's unbelievable already but uh but we, we we need to we need to be thankful and minimize the 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 confusion at this time for them because they're, they're doing great work but i'll i'll uh i'll check on that later today all right thank you matthew next to tori yorgi with uh, wsaz hey everybody it's tori yorgi with wsaz i wanted to ask about trick-or-treat uh, we're about one month out. I know Ohio's Department of Health issued guidelines. I also know Kanawha County Commission sent a letter to Secretary Crouch asking for guidance as to how trick or treat should be handled this year. Can parents expect trick or treat in general? And can they expect guidelines from the state on this? If so, when? And also, sorry, a little two part question. Halloween this year is on a Saturday night, and Halloween is already a night people go out to the bars in general. How are you going to monitor that? Will you? Uh, limit parties or bars for that night in particular. Thank you. Well, let me let me just answer it. Okay. Uh, you know, thank goodness that it's September the twenty third. I think, and and Halloween is is not till the end of October, so we've got we've got plenty of time to decide how we're going to, or whether we're going to trick or treat, you know. But right now, what we're trying to do is do anything in our power that we possibly can to be able to stop people from dying or, or, or to be able to get more people tested or, or to be able to do all the things, you know, from people going back to school or not or playing sports or whatever it may be. I will promise you just this. I've not done much work at all on Halloween yet. And, but by October the 1st, I will give you guidelines and everything and thoughts. You know, I, I really believe that communities and cities should really weigh in and counties should really be weighing in as to, as to what we ought to do. And I know it's important. I know it's a real fun time and everything, especially for our kids. And I want to be able to do it, you know. And, and, and I know Saturday night, it makes it problematic that, 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 that it falls on Saturday and everything. And so, 
it's good in some ways, but it's surely not good in others. And, you know, from the standpoint of people out at the bars and kids in the roads and everything and all that kind of stuff is, you know, we sure don't want a tragedy. So, so there's lots of different things to look at. But if you'll just give me to the 1st of October, I'll give you plenty, plenty of notice and everything. I want like crazy our kids to be able to get out there and trick or treat and uh, dress up and, and, and have a lot of fun and everything because it's, it, it's, it's a fun holiday, that's for sure. And, and, uh, and so give me, just give me a week or so here and let, let's, let's try to get a bunch of this other stuff halfway settled down and then we'll get to that. All right, thank you, Tori. Next to Lacey Pearson with the Charleston Gazette Mail. Thanks, Governor. Um, I want to ask a question, or it might be actually a couple of questions about private schools. Um, with private schools being able to open, do you worry about further discrepancies in education between children whose families um, can afford private school and children whose families can't? Um, I know you said the state doesn't give private schools any money, but I think you have some flexibility in the CARES Act to give public schools money. So are you considering giving um, CARES Act money to help uh, public schools function as nearly as they can to private schools um, and you know I guess more to ask um, just how are you working to make sure that children who don't have the privilege of attending private schools don't fall further behind their more privileged peers who have access to a private school education right now well first and foremost let, let me uh, you, you got lots and lots and lots of different you know uh, uh, aspects of your questions and everything. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to touch on all of them, but uh, the first thing is just this. From the standpoint of government, from the standpoint of freedom of religion, from the standpoint of all the different things, you know, the, it, it, really, it really becomes dicey as to whether or not we genuinely have control over what our Public, our, our private and Christian schools do in the first place. Now, we can fight over the fact that there's an executive order that says, you know, you can't go do this, you can't do that and everything. And we can try to make one size fit all and say the private and, and, and the Christian schools are one and the same with all the public schools. And we can do that, but the, fact are, the facts are it's different. It's just different. Now... From the standpoint of, of kids that where parents can afford and they're sending them to private schools versus the kids going to public schools, well, you know, to be perfectly honest, you know, I could have surely sent our kids to private school. I really believe with all in me that the public school system does a terrific job with, and, and the teachers have been great my kids, you know, one of them went on to be a doctor, the other one went on to be a really successful business guy. And so, so you know, I went to public school, Kathy went to public school, you know, from a standpoint of, of, you know, people being able to afford one or not afford another and everything is surely something that we want to be compassionate about, but I can't, I can't go there and get into all that and everything. I know from the standpoint of the funding the private and the, and the Christian schools are on their own. Uh, you know, we, we've gotten $91 million that we were able to pump into our public school systems and everything and do all kinds of different things. And, and you know, so, so uh, and, and, and in addition to that, you know, from the private school standpoint, especially the Christian schools, you know, they're, they're, they really, believe, and, and, I, and I'm sure they do this, but they, they believe that their church and their school are one and the same. And, they, and they're, they're teaching, you know, religion, you know, at their schools. And so, so it, it's just different, you know, we can get into a situation and say, you know, well, you know, Johnny over here, you know, he's, he's not, he's not, getting to go to a private school because his parents can't afford to, you know, pay whatever the tuition is or whatever the situation is in the private school. But, but it, you know, you know, and I've got all the compassion in the world for Johnny over here or whatever it may be. I want to try to help. I want to try to help all of our children, especially our children that are having a tough way to go and their families a tough way to go. You know that. I mean, people know that from, from watching me and watching my, my actions in my life and everything. I want, 
I want to try to help in every way I possibly can. But in this situation, you know, I, I don't think that that's, uh, you know, that's an arena that we, we need to have. Uh, I, I, mean, I, I, I can't see where we, we have a dialogue there. All right, thank you, Lacey. Next to Charles Young with WV News. Hi, this is Charles Young with WV News. Um, Governor, you mentioned allocating some funds to facilitate the ramped up um, testing that you've ordered. Uh, how, how much money is that? Where is it coming from? Um, and then secondly, how long do you anticipate it will take before the state reaches that uh, 7,000 tests per day benchmark that you mentioned at the beginning of the week? Thank you. Charles, first of all, you know, the, all the people around me are going to live a miserable life, you know, and I hate to say it, an absolutely miserable life, you know, if, uh, you know, and listen to me, you know, and, uh, but, uh, until we, until we get to a level of testing that is, is really significant, but, uh, uh, and, and 7,000 would be the minimum, and, and to me, we need to be there this afternoon, we, you know, and, uh, and we won't be there this afternoon, but I'm telling you to the Lord above, we're going to be there. We're going to be there real, real, real soon. You know, you got everyone's got to understand that uh, one of the traits that I have is I am an extremely impatient person from the standpoint of if I see something that needs attention and needs done, I want it done now, right now. And so, but from the standpoint of the, the other aspects of your question, you know, we, we set aside 50, 50 million additional dollars to do additional testing through the CARES Act and, and through the CARES money, and, uh, and we've got the monies to be able to do this and, and to be able to pay our National Guard and everything. We've got the money to be able to do that, and we just need to move forward and get on with it. All right, thank you, Charles. Next to Mark Curtis with Next Star Media. Good afternoon, Governor and staff members. Uh, and Governor, I'll ask you and uh, perhaps Secretary Crouch or uh, Dr. Amjad to address this, but as you may know, uh, the American Federation of Teachers, West Virginia chapter sent out a press release this morning, as did your opponent, Ben Solango, saying the way schools or the requirement that schools report uh, cases among students, teachers and staff has changed and they're having some concerns about that. So I'm asking, what, what are the standards? What are the steps? for schools to report the requirements if a child or a teacher or staff member is test positive and has it changed and why? Okay, uh, Dr. Amjad, do you have uh, information I believe uh, on that? Sure, hi Mark. It, it hasn't changed Mark, I'm not sure. I haven't seen their, um, their statements out there but it hasn't changed from the beginning. If a child or um, staff is positive it goes to the local health department, um, and those are cases. They then do contact tracing, and it will still go through those regular contact tracing modes. As we mentioned earlier, it's defined as an outbreak if the cases are linked within a 14-day period that goes back to a school setting. Those are defined as outbreaks through our reporting system. And all these cases that um, are being referred to, um, they are reported at a local level, you know, local journalists, local TV stations. Those are reported to the school board, the local health departments. Um, parents are notified, teachers are notified at the local level. So those are being aware um, at the community level. So nothing has changed as far as that goes. So I'm not sure what, um, what you're referring to at this time, but those have not changed at all. Um, if someone is sick, those are reported at the local health department level and being addressed um, very well, actually, because we are also notified of such things through communication. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mark. Next to Paul Mullen with WCBC. Good afternoon, Governor. I have a question about the psychology of the pandemic. Uh, you mentioned that people around you were going to be miserable. I think there are a lot of people who are cranky, a lot of people tired of uh, following edicts whether they're justified or not. Um, I, I'd like to hear from you about how your staff has weathered it, Secretary Crouch, all of the uh, members of the panel, if they could weigh in, if they want to, that'd be fine. Uh, how, uh, how far can we go with this without people just kind of rebelling? And I think we've already seen the edges of that. Governor? 
Well, is, is, is this Paul? Mm -hmm. Okay, Paul, uh, let me tell you this. Most generally, most generally from my standpoint, and, uh, you know, if... If I, if I could summarize my feelings, my feelings are just this. You know, Paul, uh, if I'd step back and tell you the honest truth, and that's all I know how to tell you, is just this, is from my standpoint, it gets lonely. And from my standpoint, it gets really tiring. And it gets really hard. But really and truly, I keep going back to just this. I think all of us that are out there, we're dealing with people that are dying and all and getting really sick. And whether their kids ought to be in school or not be in school. And kids really having all kinds of struggles, whether it be special needs kids or whatever. At the end of the day, Paul... You know, all of us, all of us have just got to suck it up. It's not easy. It's nowhere close to easy. But we just got to suck it up and keep going because we've all signed on to this job to try to get through it. We all signed on to a job of honor to serve and to get through it. And really and truly, sure, it's tough. And sure, it's lonely. And absolutely, we could just lay down and say, gone. we're just as tired as we can be, and we've just tried as hard as we can be, and, you know, I'm sick and tired of this and everything else. And we try to be professional in all of our thoughts, but, but really, you know, what I was referring to just a minute ago is just Charles's question about how fast can we get these sites set up. I mean, for crying out loud, Paul, you know, the, the reality is real simple. The faster we get the site set up, I have said to my people over and over, for every minute that goes by, this situation is getting worse. So what do we do? What do we do? Do we say we're lonely or we're tired or whatever? That's not just going to cut it. And especially not going to cut it with me. So, uh, so at the end of the day, you know, I want to be understanding, I want to be respectful, and I want to be thankful and appreciative and all those things of the hard work that all my staff has done, but we're not going to finish, we're not going to quit running until this is over. And that's all there is to it. All right, thank you, Paul. Next, we'll go to Taylor Stuck with the Herald Dispatch. Hi, everyone, it's Taylor with the Herald Dispatch. Um, I was wondering if you could um, talk about the situation in our hospitals again. We had CAMC last week or the beginning of this week, maybe saying, you know, they, they were needing some more assistance um, just across the river from us in Huntington, Ashland, their hospitals at capacity. So just wondering if we could talk about the situation statewide, but also if someone could address a rumor that I've heard now from several people um, saying that they hear from hospital workers or healthcare professionals that hospitals get federal money if they have COVID patients. So they're just marking down that they have COVID patients when they might not truly have them. So I was wondering if someone could address that. Thank you. Governor? Yes. Uh, well, let me start with the, the last uh, issue first. Um, uh, COVID is a communicable disease. It's, it's required to be reported. Uh, that cannot be falsified uh, that I'm aware of. Those tests come through electronically based upon from the labs themselves. So I, I, that's the first I've heard of that. I'm kind of um, a little stunned by that. Uh, in terms of the staff in hospitals, uh, th those are independent uh, entities, private entities. Uh, there are positives there. And it's the same situation with, with regard to outbreaks. We have a lot of positives in, in, in several hospitals in the state of West Virginia. If those are outbreaks, we list those and we have those and, and we track those. Most of the positive cases in hospitals, as we've learned, are from uh, staff who have, who, have been, who have 
gotten that uh, disease, gotten COVID in the community, and then they come into work and they're tested and then they're immediately sent home and isolated. So, so that's handled very well. Hospitals are safe. I want to make sure everyone understands if there's an outbreak there, it's a safe environment to go for, for the community to go and, and, and get care. So uh, I think that's all of your questions. I'm sorry there were several issues there, but I hope I can uh, handled those for you. All right, thank you, Taylor. Next and last question today to David Beard with the Dominion Post. Hi, uh, David Beard. Um, on the Mon County Bar topic, and if it's possible to set aside the lawsuit, uh, what would be the uh, benchmark for reopening them? Would it be gold or yellow or green? And what factors would weigh into opening them and then keeping them open again? Thanks. Well, David, I think, I think the weighing in of the counties, the city, the health departments and everything is going to be critical to me. But absolutely, the most critical is just getting ourselves down to where our, our, our rate, you know, whether it be positivity or infection, is really, has really moved down into the right levels and, and, and to where we feel safe. Look, I want all of our businesses to be open. For crying out loud, I mean, you know, absolutely, I get it. We've got people's jobs at stake. We've got people's livelihood. Absolutely, I get every bit of that and everything. But we've got to get to a situation to where, you know, that we can either follow the rules when we do reopen, and absolutely we've got to be able to get our numbers down to where we feel that it's safe to reopen. But for crying out loud, we cannot, we cannot just barely get ourselves to where we need to be and, and then have an instant replay of what we've already done the first time where we reopened back up, we didn't follow the rules, we just ignored everything that we told and we said and, and, and then look what happened. And remember, David, what my dad always said, son, it's okay to be working really hard and driving a bulldozer and operating that bulldozer. It's okay, you know, son, that if you get that bulldozer hung up now, you get a D10 or a D9 hung up, you've got a problem, and that's all there is to it. And I've done it before. I mean, I have done it, absolutely running it myself. I have done it before. And you get that D9 or D10 hung up, and you've got to go get another D10 to try to get it out. And he would say, son, it's okay to get one bulldozer hung up. But for God's sakes of living, son, you best better not go get another D10 and get them both hung up. Well, I mean, that's the situation we're in right there with the bars. We opened up. We didn't follow the guidelines. We had an avalanche come upon us and everything. Now what we've got to do is we've got to absolutely make sure from the standpoint of our cities, our counties, the health department and everything that it's safe and everything to open. And then we've got to follow the guidelines and we've got to be able to reopen that way. And that's just that simple. All right. Thank you, David. Uh, Governor, we're ready for the test if you are. All right, I'm ready. Come on, let's do it. And everything. All right. Everybody, I hope you all really enjoy, get a lot of enjoyment out of this and everything. But uh, So these, uh, these gentlemen are from the 35th Civil Support Team with the West Virginia National Guard. We have Gary Thacker, who's a medic, and Oren Click, who's the medical operations officer. Oren's daughter, Aniston Click, turns nine today, so we want to wish her a happy birthday. Yeah. As the governor is getting a test done, so you can see from folks that are watching how easy it is to do. The guardsmen are quite expert at this, and, and this test will enable us to be able to add uh, another uh, test to the Kanawha County numbers, but also a way to make sure that we are um, uh, correctly identifying anybody and everybody who is able to be tested in the, in the county. So the governor, thank you for being a great role model here. And uh, as President Gee said one time, the, um, the happiest uh, faculty member in the university was the dentist that gave the, um, the president a root canal. So maybe this is the happiest guard officer, I don't know. No, listen, that, that was great. And, and uh, there's nothing to it. It takes every bit of, you know, 10 seconds. There's absolutely nothing to it at all, and uh, there's no pain, there's no nothing, you know, and uh, just a split little bit of something that would make you try to sneeze, but other than that, uh, there's nothing to it. You know, I've been tested 
multiple times, and, uh, and, and I encourage everyone. You know, like I said, I hope, I hope everyone got a, got a big kick out of that, but, uh, but you know, it, it's good that everybody sees that it's just, uh, there's not much to it, not much to it, and it's really easy to do. But uh, am I wrapping up now? I would wrap up by just saying just this. Absolutely, Mon County, Kanawha County, Putnam County, all the counties that have been in the orange or in the red, listen to me. You are so close. You're so close to being there. I want you to be there so badly. I want our kids back in school. I want our, our athletes to be playing on the playing fields. I want absolute all that, except I want more than anything just this one thing. I want the information. I want them to lay in front of me the information of thousands of tests to where I can go directly as a pinpoint surgical strike and go directly to the problems and help those people and get that situation fixed. If you lay on top of me thousands of tests, I can fix this thing through the great work of all of our health people and the great work of all the education community, lay on top of me thousands of tests. If you do that, you're going to automatically be back on the sports fields and back in schools and all that. That is absolutely a given. You are so close, so close in all those counties. But more importantly than anything, if you pile on us all those tests, We'll fix this thing with God's will. And so, with all that being said, I'll sign off there. We do not have the power, but with God's great assistance, we will get there. Anyway, thank you all so much.